This video is an overview of Holacracy. Um, it's designed for people who are just going to get started with, uh, with self-organization. They're just getting into it and they just want to know what's the overall picture? What's the big picture of Holacracy? There's not going to be a lot of detail in here. It's just so you can kind of start to get comfortable with uh, self-management and some of these concepts and so you can get good at asking good questions. Uh, so here we go. So this is called Holacracy, a bird's eye view. And we're going to cover five things. First, we're going to talk about four spaces. Then we're going to talk about tactical and governance. We'll talk a little bit about what to expect when you start your implementation and then <clears throat> how you can make it easier. And we'll also go over a few terms that are helpful to know. So the goal of this is to help you understand the biggest parts of Holacracy so that it will be easier to learn. The four spaces that I've written here are your personal space, role space, circle space, and org space or organization space. And we'll talk about each one of these and just kind of define what they mean. So here's a picture of it. Personal space is in the middle, and then role space is outside of that, circle space is outside of that, and organization space is outside of that. And the reason we have these four sections here is because what you're doing at a particular time um, is usually influenced by a particular space. And it, the, each space is, has a protection from the, from the one outside of it. Um, well, so what do I mean by that? Well, in personal space, we're just talking about you and your normal life, you, your goals, values, and desires, and the reason why you do what you do personally. This is completely distinct from the organization or your job. Uh, it's who you are in the world. And who you are is also somebody in a role. In role space, you're working in an organization and you're doing work for the organization. Same for circle and org level. But role space is important to think about because when you're doing work for the company, it's different than doing work for yourself. When you're in role space, you wanna be thinking about understanding your roles you want to think about working on projects on behalf of your roles. And then you also want to think about prioritizing your work, what's more important than what else. And you also spend a lot of time thinking about getting clear about what you need to move your roles forward. So when you're in role space, these are four helpful things that are, are good to think about. Think about understanding your roles, working on your projects, prioritizing your work, and then getting clear about what you need to move forward. Moving up to circle space, circle space is like team space. And in circle space, there's a lot of making requests, which can also just be asking for help, but requests have a special meaning and we'll talk about that later. There's also asking for information and sharing information and finding ways to get problems out of the way. So when we're working in a group, we're usually making requests asking or sharing information. And then we're also talking about how to get problems out of the way so we can move our role work forward. And then if we talk about org space, this is more about breaking down the overall work of the organization. It's about changing the roles um, because the roles are dynamic. They, they, they change over time. And it's about finding people to put into the roles because the roles are not the people and people's roles can change and that's perfectly fine and healthy and okay. And then also deciding what everyone should work towards. And that's, that kind of goes back to purpose. So as, a, as an individual in personal space, you have a purpose that you're doing what you do in the world. You might not have, have clarified it. You might not have, not have written it down, but we, you know, everyone's on the world for a reason and we, we each have a purpose. And the same way the organization has a purpose too. Deciding what everyone should work towards is determining the organization's purpose. There's also purpose at the level of circle and purpose at the level of role. But for now, just think about when you're thinking about the overall organization, what is the purpose that it's working towards? Okay, so we just talked briefly about these four spaces, personal space, that's you, role space, you working in a role, circle space, you working with others, and then organization space, you working uh, on behalf of the whole organization or working with people together on the overall structure of the organization. Um, <clears throat> the reason there's that little dark line around personal space 
is because when someone's asking you to do something, say in circle space, you have the right to say no to something if it violates personal space uh, and not, not physical space. I'm talking about uh, the, the requests you get in the organization are requests for roles. They're not usually requests for you personally. Um, so I just wanted to draw this out so you can kind of get a sense of there are different levels of thinking that are useful to think about in holacracy. Um, and at, at any one time, you can be kind of in a certain mental space, one of these four spaces. Okay, so we just talked about the four spaces. Now we're going to talk about tactical and governance and what's different about them and what's uh, the same about them. So you'll hear these terms a lot in holacracy, tactical and governance. There are tactical meetings and there are governance meetings. Tactical involves working in the organization, working in our roles, doing the work of the organization. And that's what you think of when you think of normal work at a normal company. So you're, you're working in your roles. We don't call them roles. We just call them a job. You work your job. Here we're a little more explicit. We say you're working in your roles. But when you're in a governance meeting or when you're doing governance, you're working on your roles. You're changing the structure of the roles, changing the structure of the company. You're deciding what are the best roles to have to achieve our purpose together. So tactical is working in the roles. Governance is working on the roles. Um, with tactical, you have flexible meetings. They're called tactical meetings. And they still follow a process, but it's a much more flexible process. Whereas in governance, you have uh, much more rigid meetings. And the meetings are very, very structured. The reason for that is that when you're doing governance meetings, you're actually changing the rules for how you work together. And so it needs to be very specific. In tactical, you're just working together. It can be a little more flexible. So tactical meetings are flexible. Governance meetings are rigid. Tactical work happens every day. Every day you're at work, you're doing tactical. You also have tactical meetings where you do the same things you do every day, but you do them in a specific format. That's the tactical meeting. Um, but governance only happens in special meetings. That only happens when you're together in a governance meeting. Um, so that's another way to think about the difference between tactical and governance. Tactical happens all the time. Governance is a special occasion, which happens regularly, usually every two weeks or every month, you'll have a governance meeting. Um, but the governance changes only happen in the governance meeting. Tactical things happen all the time. And in tactical, we talk a lot about requests, making requests of roles. And these requests usually result in projects. So I might say, hey, in your role as um, website manager, could you take a project to update the events list? That's a holacracy way of saying, I want you to go um, do your job on the website and put up the new events. But I say, I, say, uh, I say it's a request and I say it's a project and I say what role I'm asking. And we'll get into that a lot more in the future. I just want you to start with the idea that in tactical, there's a lot of requests and projects. In governance, on the other hand, we talk more about proposals and roles. The proposals change the roles. So we make a proposal to change a role or to make a new role, sometimes to delete a role. Um, so the main thing to think about here is that in tactical, uh, requests turn into projects. In governance, proposals turn into roles. And they're different things. In governance, you're not going to find requests. So if you're in a governance meeting, no one's going to say, hey, could you take a project? No, that doesn't happen in governance. That only happens in a tactical setting. And in a tactical meeting, you're never going to hear um, somebody say, I propose that we change this role. Um, that is the stuff for governance meetings. So that's another good distinction. And it's really important to separate these two things apart. Tactical meetings and governance meetings. Um, we do proposals in governance. We do requests in tactical. There are no proposals in tactical. There are no requests in governance. And the purpose of this slide is just to help you kind of separate these two things out in your head. Okay, there's the world of tactical and there's the world of governance and they're different. But they're also in some ways the same. So here we're going to talk a little bit about some of the things that is the same in both tactical and governance or commonalities. 
So in both cases, we're trying to get clarity. We're going to get clarity and we're going to make things explicit. One of the big things you do in Holacracy is you get clear and you take what's implicit. That means it's not written down and you write it down. So it's explicit. So we make the, the implicit explicit. So you're going to see lots of clarity in both tactical and governance and throughout all of Holacracy. You're also going to see a lot of change. So be ready to accept change and be ready to learn. The roles are constantly changing. What people are asking you to do changes much more quickly than in traditional organizations. Um, and you need to be, you need to be asking yourself um, what changes are good for your roles and what, which aren't. We'll talk about that later some more. It's okay. But what you just want to understand right now is that change happens a lot. So be accepting of change. There's also an emphasis on purpose at all levels in Holacracy, both tactical and governance. The organization overall has a purpose statement, and then each team has its own purpose statement, and each role even can have a purpose statement. So what purpose allows us to do is to align around a common goal without having to have a single point of authority telling us what to do. As long as we all understand the purpose, we can all go in the same direction without having one boss commanding everybody. So you'll see a focus on purpose in both tactical and governance. In tactical, someone might say, hey, would it serve your purpose to do X, Y, Z? Um, and in governance, you might say, oh, I'd like to change the purpose of this role to X, Y, Z. In both cases, we're talking about purpose, but in tactical, we're acting in the purpose, we're working towards the purpose. In governance, we're working on the purpose, we're changing the purpose. And then I also wanted to put role and soul on here. This is a distinction that you are not your job and our roles are not us. In most companies, you're fused to your role. You and your job, they're the same thing. People may treat you like you are your job. Um, but in Holacracy, we, we wear many hats. We energize many roles, that's how we say it. Um, so separation of role and soul is really, really important. And it's not just so you can get clear on what you're doing, which it definitely does, but it also helps the organization change and adapt without being stuck to the, the exact people and the exact skills that we have. And sometimes someone will make up a new role and there's no one to fill it. There's no one qualified. That's okay. We want to, we want to get really clear that role and soul are separate things, separation of role and soul. And that's a huge topic. We could talk more about it, but we'll leave it there for now. And then in both situations, we're talking about processing tensions. Now you might hear the word tension and get a little, un a little uncomfortable. Usually it's a bad thing when someone's tense um, or when someone has tension. But really, the reason we use this word is because we want to reclaim it. Tensions are the stuff of life. Tensions are the way we know that something needs to change. It's how we know to move forward. We feel tension. So tensions are not bad, and in both tactical, tactical and governance, we're constantly processing tensions. Okay, so let's talk a little bit, little bit about what you can expect over the next days, weeks, or months as you start to get into Holacracy. Um, there's going to be a lot of special language. There's lots of new terms and formal language, and um, it's all used for a specific purpose. So I would say just give it a shot. Um, it's a little, it can be uncomfortable at first, but you'll get used to it. And once you're used to it, you'll be able to see the world in a different way. You'll be able to work differently. You'll be able to communicate with your colleagues about new things. Um, it's really very cool. So you're going to see a lot of special language. That's one thing to watch out for. There's also going to be some new meeting formats and the meetings feel very formal at first. Um, but over time they get easier and easier and faster and faster. And by the time you've done four or five of them, you'll be more efficient in your meetings than you have ever been before. It's really, really incredible, both tactical meetings and governance meetings. But these are new meeting formats, and they have a, they have a facilitator that facilitates them. They have a secretary that, that takes, takes notes and does other things. So um, you'll have to get used to the, the, the new meeting formats too. You should also get used to working in roles, um, talking to certain roles and speaking from specific roles. 
So anytime you're doing work in an organization, and really this is already probably true in your life, you're almost always in a role. It's just implicit. So let's say that you're out coaching a soccer game for your kids, or a football game, a soccer game for your kids. Um, you were in a role there, right? You're in the coach role. Now in that situation, everyone knows that you're coach and they probably call you coach and that's great. Um, some other time, maybe you're with your partner and you're in the boyfriend or girlfriend or husband or wife or father role. Not quite as clear because people don't say, hey, boyfriend, can you X, Y, Z? Um, but in Holacracy, we do. We name the roles. We name our roles. So you'll have to get used to working in roles. That's another thing that's different. You should also um, expect making requests and hearing requests. Um, and this is for clarity. So we, so we, we, we ask clearly like, hey, would it make sense to you to, to take a project to do X, Y, Z? Or I have a request. Could you um, update the website in your role as website manager? Whatever it may be. Requests are a big deal. And when you're taking requests, you get to decide if you want to take it or not. No one can tell you what to do. They can simply make a request. And if there's a disagreement, then you can talk it out. The point here is to get to a shared vision of, of, of the world and to understand each other and then to do the work, do work on behalf of the organization together. And we do that with requests. Um, I also put on here working with tensions. This is the same thing as the previous slide. Um, tensions are really what it's all about, tension processing. Most organizations do not know how to process their tensions. Most individuals don't really know how to process their tensions in a very healthy way. But using Holacracy, the organization becomes a tension processing machine, and it's wonderful. So how can we make this a little easier along the way? Well, I would encourage you to be curious, ask questions, help each other out, and don't try to be perfect. And just learn as you go. You're not going to know it all right away. And some, for some people, that makes them uncomfortable. But just know that there are rules, and it is, it's safe enough to try. It's a good thing. It's, a, it's, it's, an, it's generally an improvement, and it makes life easier and better in the long run. And it's also something probably no one's ever asked you to do before. So um, if you can approach it with a curious mindset and just um, when you don't know something, ask questions and get help, that's really the best thing you can do. Okay, so finally, I just want to talk through a few terms. Um, now, we could spend you know, a whole day just on this one slide, but I'm going to go kind of quickly here, and hopefully when you hear these things, the next time you hear them, you'll be able to think back to today and say, oh, yeah, I remember hearing about a role, or I remember hearing about the Constitution. So we have roles, and roles are what make up the organization. Roles are um, what you do work in. They have a purpose. They have certain things they're accountable for. And a collection of roles is called a circle. Circles are, are, are kind of like big roles. They have a purpose in the world, something they're working towards. And the work of the circle is broken down by the roles. We don't need to get into that too much, but you can just think of a circle as a team with some special rules. Circles also have a circle lead. That's kind of like the person in charge of the circle. And um, you, if you're in a role, you're a role lead but you don't have to worry about that right now. I also want to define the term tension. A tension in Holacracy is the difference between how things are now and how you think they could be. It's a felt sense. It's a personal felt sense of an opportunity to improve or a thing to change or something to watch out for. And we, we have tension all the time in life. Um, the reason we use the word tension is because we want to reclaim it. We want it to not be a bad thing. We want it to just be tensions. Tensions are just a real thing. And by acknowledging that, we can actually use the power of tensions to make change and respond faster and grow both personally and organizationally. And then you'll hear a lot about projects and actions. Um, a project is an outcome to achieve. It's something to work towards, like a goal. It can be very small. It can be wash my car could be a project, or it could be very big. It could be um, a complete marketing campaign to uh, Western Europe. Um, it could take months and months. It could take years, or it could just take a, a few hours. An action is just a single thing. 
It's an, sometimes you'll hear next action. It's just this next next single thing you do. It could be for uh, washing the car. It could be um, uh, make sure I have enough soap, or you know, go out to the garage and get the bucket. Uh, it's just simple next steps that you can take to work towards a project. And a project is just made out of many, many actions. So if someone says, um, hey, can you take an action? Or hey, can you take a project? They're just asking you to do something, projects and actions. And this also gets into GTD, the getting things done methodology that uh, lots of holacracy practitioners use. But we're not going to talk about that right now. Going over to the right-hand side, there are requests. Um, and a request is simply you asking somebody to do something on behalf of a, ro of behalf of a role, usually. Um, so why is it a request and not a, a, a demand or a command? Because the request has to make sense to you. So if someone makes a request, think, you, you think to yourself, hmm, does that make sense for me to do? And if it does, you do it. And if it doesn't, you say, no, that doesn't really make sense. I don't think, I don't think you can expect that from me. I'd like to understand how you think that my role would be, you know, responsible for doing that. And you have a, have a conversation and it's, it's, uh, just because there's disagreement, it doesn't mean it's bad. Um, it's actually how you get to a better understanding. So requests are, are a big thing that we talk about a lot. And then, uh, just a few more concepts. We have the tactical meeting. These happen regularly, usually once a week. And this is a team meeting where you go through a certain process to make sure that nothing's falling through the cracks. There's also the governance meeting. These happen a little bit less often, and this is where you actually change the structure of the organization. It's a fascinating process, and it's really wonderful. And everyone in each circle gets to participate in the governance meeting. It's not um, one boss making all the decisions. It's everyone in the circle, and everyone gets a chance to object to changes, too. So it's very participatory. But it's not democratic in that sense. We won't get into that right now. Right now, you just need to know there's tactical and there's governance, and they're different. And then there's the Constitution. The Constitution is a document that describes all of the rules for playing holacracy, for how to do holacracy um, in a very explicit, and again, we value explicit over implicit, in a very explicit format. So the Constitution, um, you might hear somebody say, oh, yeah, that's in the Constitution, or they might mention the Constitution. Just know that that's a document. It's like the it's like the rules of the game. It's the rules of the operating system, and um, you don't want to read the Constitution to learn holacracy because it's pretty it's pretty heavy reading. But when there's a disagreement, we can go in there and we can look and we can see, or not. I don't even, don't even want to say disagreement. When there's a misunderstanding or when you need more clarity, we go to the Constitution to look things up. Okay, so that's basically it. Um, my wish for you is that you're successful on your self management journey. I'll be here with you as much as I can. Um, this is just the beginning, just a quick taste and a few high level ideas about what you can expect. Uh, this is my email address, j at teal.dog. Feel free to drop me an email anytime. I'm here to help. Um, I, I donate 20% of my time to helping people uh, learn holacracy and learn uh, self-management. And that's basically it. I really wish you the best and uh, hope to hear from you soon.